Hey everybody, welcome to the new BBB Attorneys Legal News Update. The news is always full of legal issues and issues related to the law and the news. And so periodically we're going to come here and we're going to tell you how we view some of these issues in the news and how the law and the courts and maybe provide you with some education about that. First up is Michael K. Williams, one of my favorite shows, The Wire. He was the character Omar. He struggled throughout his life with addiction and he passed away, we believe as a result, several months ago of a drug overdose. Interestingly, the New York Police Department as well as the uh, federal government has charged four people with his death as a result of them providing narcotics, including fentanyl, to Michael K. Williams. They did a search, they found some of the same vials that were found near Michael K. Williams, and so they're holding those people accountable for his death. Personally, while I want someone to be held accountable for his death, and drug addiction is a huge stain on our society, this is gonna be a very difficult case to prove. There has to be a direct connection between Michael K. Williams' death and the purchasing of the drugs. Michael K. Williams ingested those drugs likely himself, and it was unlikely that he was forced to do so. So what's interesting there is they're gonna to have to prove that connection that these persons who sold the drugs intentionally or knew that providing those drugs would result in a person's death. I'll be interested to see how that case plays out. I personally think the prosecutors have probably overreached a little bit in making those charges, but it's a case we're certainly gonna follow. Second, also out of New York, we have this really interesting case of Sarah Palin. Remember her? She ran for vice president many years ago. She has brought a case against the New York Times for what's called libel. Now, it's very difficult to sue a newspaper for libel, especially if you are a public figure. And so in this case, Sarah Palin has to prove that the New York Times intentionally or with malice put facts into their newspaper that were untrue. This specifically comes down to an editorial that was written that said that and connected Sarah Palin to the shooting of then Representative Gabby Giffords. So that connection that they put together, Sarah Palin is arguing that that was intentional and that they were trying to assassinate her character at the time. The New York Times says it was unintentional and it was taken down within a few hours. Libel cases are almost always unsuccessful against newspapers, and especially as a public figure as Sarah Palin is, I don't think this case will be successful, but it certainly is going to raise the issue and likely bring to attention some of this opinion journalism that comes out, and at what point does it become a situation that that newspaper, that organization, is responsible for damages. And finally, we have a local story related to masks. The governor in Connecticut has issued previously a mask mandate for all of schools. And there is a movement afloat to end that mask mandate. And so I wanna to talk to you about what that might mean. The governor has an order right now that all state schools, all schools in the state, excuse me, have to have masks for both teachers, staff, and children. Once the governor gets rid of that mandate, which he is likely to do in the next few weeks, that mandate will be left to the towns similar to the, how he's dealt with the mask mandate for restaurants and public buildings. That doesn't mean that you don't have to wear masks in school. And I think this is going to be a huge problem for parents. And it's gonna be something we're gonna to wanna to watch. There has been some recent data that has shown that masks do not prevent um, the spread of the coronavirus or COVID-19. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see how parents react. I expect that once the governor drops the school mask mandate, there are going to be many, many towns that are also going to do that. I personally believe that the masks have not shown to reduce coronavirus in children. And now that we have most children vaccinated, I think it's wrong for this town and the state to continue to mandate those masks. It doesn't mean you can't wear masks. That's a personal choice that you choose. But we need to move on from this and allow our children to be children again. So that's it for the legal news here. We will be in touch shortly with additional headlines. Please give us your thoughts below, and we'd love to hear from you. And if there's a story you would like us to cover, we'd be happy to do it. Thanks, everybody.